Psalm 32 is one of the penitent psalms, a psalm of confession, forgiveness. There doesn't seem to be a particular sin tied to it like Psalm 51, which David wrote after his adultery with Bathsheba. But there are some who think that could also be one of the motivating factors for this psalm. My story begins, like all stories, once upon a time. It was the summer of 77, and I had just seen the most beautiful girl in the world. And I wanted to impress her and become friends, so I naturally embellished my qualities and my resume and tried to impress her with who I was and what a wonderful scholastic college I was attending. And as we became friends, and I began to realize that a true friend, I needed to be more open. And I needed to show her my feet of clay, and in fact, a lot of my legs and upper torso were also made of clay. And as that time came, I realized I had to talk about a particular incident that had taken place that spring on a campus very far away from Lake Mendota where we were becoming friends. And it had to do with having taken a class. You know, when you take a class at the beginning of the semester, it's pretty much, uh, oh yeah, I can do this. This is easily under my belt. But when midterms come, then I start struggling with, why did I make this choice? And why did I take this elective course, which is, a remote statistical programming language called APL, which no one actually ever uses anyway. But at that time, it seemed important. And as I was struggling through the midterm, I had sort of decided to take two hours, and so I would knock it off on a Saturday evening after dinner, and it didn't quite work out that way. It was becoming more difficult as I struggled trying to complete that program and seemed to be getting caught in a loop. And about 10 o'clock when the time was up, I looked around and most of the students in that computer lab were from, my, from that particular course. An hour passed at 11 o'clock when one of my friends walked up to the printout, pulled out a sheet, and then hit it. And with a big smile, walked back to his desk and started packing up his bag. He was leaving. It was 11 o'clock at night when a friend of his, who apparently knew him well, got up and left the room with him and came back and then with a big smile typed up something and had it solved. I wasn't going to ask what he had found out. That would be cheating. And as a Christian, after working for three hours, I wasn't going to cheat, except that was not my rationale an hour later when it was midnight. I was now seeing the advantages of sleep, the tiredness of my body, the necessity that probably no one will ever know, certainly not the faculty. I mean, statistical programming is pretty much like two plus two is equal to four, or two plus one plus one is equal to four. It's not some prose, there's no stylistic thing that will reveal that you were copying from someone else. By 12.30, I was sunk. I did go and ask a friend and typed it up, got the printout, submitted it. But that walk home on that dark campus, and it was a distance to the apartment where I was staying, was a struggle. It was as though there were arguments that I was making that I was trying to close a door really, really hard. And there was a force on the other side telling me I was a Christian and I shouldn't be doing it, pushing in the opposite direction. It took a while for me to close that door that evening. I was in bed and tossing and turning. And next day, of course, with a church, it kept coming up, but then it seemed I was getting stronger. I was able to close that door much more quickly. And it wasn't taking as long as that had taken that particular night. Verse nine of this particular Psalm says something like that. Do not be like a horse or a mule 
which have no understanding and must be controlled by bit and brittle, or they will not come to you. You know, most of the time, the picture of the, the sinner or the person who has wandered away from the flock is described to be a proverbial sheep who's wandered away. Here, there seems to be an actual resistance, someone like a bucking bronco or a stubborn mule wanting to impose its will on the master. And it sort of described me. I wanted to push that door closed. I didn't want to think about it. And there was this other force that was trying to keep it open. And as I said, I was getting stronger, so I was closing the door much quicker. But a week later, I got a note in my mailbox, and it was the TA for the course who said he wanted to talk to me. And I sort of realized the gig was up. So when I went to him, I said, you know, I need to confess. I need to tell them that, you know, it's not that as a Christian I'm not going to sin, but that as a Christian I can confess because God can protect me and, you know, allow me to continue as a member of his flock. So the TA started with all the reasons why he thought I cheated. He said, you know, after 11 o'clock, everyone took a peculiar, uh, you know, uh, steps in writing out their program. And I said, yeah, I know, I cheated. I'm sorry. He looked up, and he was going to say something more, and then he paused, and he said, you're confessing to cheating? I said, yes, I am. And he said, well, here's another paper. Go and do it. You are not going to get a very good grade, you know. I didn't. I got the fourth letter of the alphabet. And now I had to tell my friend who I was trying to impress so hard. Verse 5 says, And then I acknowledged my sin to you. I did not cover up my iniquity. The idea of acknowledge is letting God know. I did not cover, I, I will confess, I will throw it, I'll cast my sin, my transgression to you, Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. That young lady apparently knew that I had much more than a feet of clay, and we continue to be good friends today, 43 years after that incident, 42 of them as my wife. God's love is an unfailing love, verse 10. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love, his loyal love, his hesed, is what surrounds you when you trust him and not in your own power. I'd like to close with a benediction taken from the end of Psalm 32, verse 11. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous, you holy ones. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. Sing, all of you who are walking straight. Go in peace and the shalom of the Lord. Enjoy. Amen. Thank you.